at 19, you're not supposed to be able to do that. You can see what the expression on my face is. Right. The expression on my face is, um, Damn. <laughs> well, hello everyone. Kevin Lee here. I'm with the infamous Mr. Teller right now. So we are about to do something I never thought was possible. We are gonna actually take a revisit at my Penn and Teller full list performance the first time around. So you ready? I am. I, I, I'll, be, I'll be happy to see it again because I've seen a lot of magic since then. He sure has. Well, let's get right to it. <laughs> parents are traditional Asian parents. They came to America wanting a better future for their children. And when I got into magic, they were pretty worried because they wanted their son to have a very stable job and future. Applying for college, my father recommended- I'm gonna pause it right here because I think that this is something um, worth mentioning. So okay. this was my sophomore year of college. Wow. <laughs> I know, I was going through business school. I was figuring out like what it is exactly I wanted to do. So, I mean, coming from a very traditional family, I'm sure you're aware that like they want us to do something financially stable, right? And something like magic is hasn't been seen like that in my family at least. Of course. So as a first person doing entertainment, like this was super nerve-wracking for them. But I think after this one and after my second appearance, you know, that was the reason that led to them to really believe me. So well, I'm I'm gratified <laughs> to hear that. Thank you. But my parents. My parents just always supported anything that I wanted to do. Right. And I was a I was a school teacher for six years and wow. I told them I told them that I think I thought I might be able to do this full time. Mm -hmm. And they said, So how are you what's your backup plan? Yeah. And I said, Well, I'm taking a year's leave of absence from teaching mm -hmm. and if I should if I should be starving in an alley <laughs> in a year, I can All go right. back to teaching again. That's and they smart. said, That sounds fine. Yeah. And I I guess it was probably that September mm -hmm when I was sleeping late yeah. and all of the people who were school teachers mm -hmm. were up at six o'clock in the morning starting yes. their cars <laughs> in the freezing cold to right, go in right. and mark test papers, I began to think, I gotta make this work. Mm -hmm. Or else I'm gonna freeze, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Well, yeah, let's keep going. Recommended business because he was also a business major and it turned out to be probably one of the best decisions of my life in my startup company. The magic fits perfectly with networking with people and connecting with them. I really want to live life doing what I love, what I'm passionate about, and magic is just that. He isn't old enough to drink, but he is old enough to drive. <laughs> I thought that was the perfect intro. Give it up for 19 year old Kevin Lee. How many experiences do you have in a year? How many do you actually remember? How many do you want to remember? To make sure I remember everything worthwhile, about a year ago, I challenged myself to take one instant photo. Every st Just a second. Yeah. That is great. No, I mean, you're, you're, already, yeah. you're, you're already taking an idea mm -hmm. and finding the magical analog for it. Yeah. You know, at 19, you're not supposed to be able to do that. I don't think that, I was aware yeah. of what you just said, that I just kind of wanted to put together a, a story and intro, but... Yeah, but now, now you already have me thinking about freezing moments in my life. You know, and so, I mean, I, I, I do remember this, this moment yeah. with, with me saying, oh, I like this guy. Because wow. so many people come in to do you know, just they just do a trick that yeah. has no that has no layering to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, back to the back to watching. Every single week of my most favorite memory, I would then attach the photo to a playing card, something I always have on me. A deck has fifty-two cards, just like a year has fifty-two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> when we look at photos, it takes us back to that moment in time, and we almost feel what we felt then. This was my birthday celebration with a few of my closest friends. Just looking at this photo right now brings me back. I feel like I'm there right now. I hear all the sounds. Let's see. Oh, this was taken after a 5K race. And it was my personal record Wait, is that a... That's a photo bomber right there. <laughs> I know what we can do. We can just take that photo bomber right off. And now, 
That looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Another thing you're doing that mm -hmm. that's, that show, just already shows us that you're a great composer of magic, mm -hmm. which is um, y you realize that the texture of something mm -hmm. has to remain fascinating and compelling yeah. throughout the throughout the throughout the experience. Mm -hmm. So you don't just go, well, here's my punchline. Right. You know, you're just taking us you're taking us on the way. It's a little trip. And this took a long time to like film that Polaroid photo because it was Oh of course. Yeah, as you can imagine. <laughs> but I think it can look a lot better if my hair wasn't so out of place. So watch my hair. Not here. Here. If we get a small breeze like this My hair is now back into place. But very nice. Thank you. Really, very nice. And that looks really good. Hashtag no filter. <laughs> ah, here we go. My brand new record player. I love listening to its music, but I also enjoy watching the vinyl spin round and around. When it spins, that's when the music starts. Needs to be a bit faster. <laughs> Tonight is actually the last week of my one photo per week challenge. Here, I have the last card. These are memories for me to keep, but I want tonight to be a memory that all of you will keep. So, I have a photo for all of you. Your team built this, it's so beautiful. Sometimes we want to relive our memories and make them last a bit longer. In this moment I have with all of you right now, I want us to spend it more. Sorry, I'm gonna stop it right here because this was because of so much inspiration from you, from Invisible Thread like we talked about. Oh. And I love that you literally created a story where you saved the world with Invisible Thread. It was all, it was based on a, a short story by yeah. Penn. Oh wow. Uh, that's, in, um, that's in Cruel Tricks for Dear Friends. Okay. And uh, we, uh, we adapted it for the, for mm -hmm. the, for the movie. Oh. Um, but. Yeah, it was all, that was all about our love of Al Flosso's magic shop okay. and all those, yeah. those, those, all those crusty old those magic shops where these guys, you know, they'll sell you nothing. <laughs> in, in Philadelphia, the, the, the one was Channon. Okay. Channon, Ch uh, Jack Channon, who was, I think, Russian, but mm -hmm. had a sort of exotic look about him, right. would, would sell absolutely anything. Wow. Uh, when my mother came in to, to buy a trick for her six-year-old child, okay. He did the cups and balls for her, nice. and then sold her the cups and, yeah. the, and the balls. You know, with a very simple routine with right, little right. pom poms and one extra ball. I love it. But uh, I, he, I think he just used to go to junk shops and yeah. you know pick up anything that looked exotic, and Refine then he would do it. great magic with yeah. it. Yeah, that's what it's about. He can sell anything. <laughs> yes. Let's right. continue. Looks so good. Thank you. My hands are shaking. <laughs> of course. Mine would be. I'm like, at any moment, something's just gonna go wrong. <laughs> this is my favorite part. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, and that's, <laughs> uh, you, the, you can see what the expression on my face is. Right. The expression on my face is, um, damn, I, I, wish, I wish I didn't have a pretty clear idea what the method was yeah. on that, because this is such a good regime. Oh, thank you. You know? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's uh, something that I worked on with Shin Lin. Oh, did you? So this was back in like 2016. I'm like, I had this weird idea of just ripping it up and combining it, combining two main plots of magic, TNR and like levitation. So put that together and I Skype with Shin and then he's like, okay, this is something interesting. So we put that on the magic market and I yeah, auditioned with that. <laughs> so And it's a beautiful yeah, trick. I mean, it's a, and it's, and it's also a great calling card for you because of the way you've con composed the story. Right. You know, and, and that's that's very rare. It's all about the context for me. I mean, it's what you say to make people care about it. And, you know, you can do a TNR straight up and it'll be pretty good. But if you, you know, add some meaning to it, make people really get invested emotion wise into it, then I mean, you know this more than anyone. Like, that's how you make people feel something. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I rarely think about making other people feel something. I, I think mostly about how to make myself feel something. I do. <laughs> That's true, though. I do. I do. I, I work. I, I work. I think. Of course, you 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 are thinking about them. Right. But you're thinking about them as you. As you, you want to you know, be them. I want to. I want to be there in the audience, seeing this thing that's inside my head. Absolutely true. And I'll, I'll lounge a little bit. You that'll, lounge. That'll fill out the two shot. That'll fill out the two shot. That works. Well, I don't know, but it's it's crazy doing magic full time right now. It's it, you have. Let me say, if you can do that, yeah. you have won the game. Yeah. You know, I I, I considered that, that first year when I was just a street performing mm -hmm. and making very little money. Right. Uh, but I was making enough to sustain myself. Mm -hmm. I just thought I won the game. Yeah. And, you know, if you can if you can live off of what you love to do, <laughs> you, know, you never work a day in your life, technically. Yeah. What else is What else is there to to, to strive for? Yeah. So I mean, when we were playing. 110 seat theaters. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, I can do this for the rest of my life. Right. And I will be delighted. Yeah. And it was only by chance that we were, you know, we were to take them to New York uh -huh. and um, we did the off Broadway show. Right. And for some reason, it happened to be the right thing at the right time. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, 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 you don't know what's going to be the right time. Readiness it, meets opportunity, as they say. But also, yeah. by that time, Penn and I had worked together for 10 years. Oh. So in a minute. when yeah. you know if if you get that getting that level of of notice mm -hmm. when you've only been in business for two years, yeah. well that's what destroys all the young rock bands, right? Because they don't know how to deal with that kind of attention. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but we did, you know, and, and this I think if we hadn't had that ten years behind yeah. us, uh, we would we would have broken up. Right. We would have split up at that point. So timing is everything. Uh, I mean, t luck is a great deal. It's yeah. Really, you know, being ready, the readiness is all, as yeah. everyone says. Yeah, it know. is. Wow. Well, do you have any advice for, you know, young people that are trying to make major decisions in their lives right now, and trying to figure it out, kind of like me right now, but I would say they, they really value that financial stability, but they also highly value that mental health, like, you know, being happy doing what you love. I, 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 yes, I do have one piece of advice. Yes. Keep your overhead low. I mean, I realize that sounds a bit crass, but okay. if you have an expensive lifestyle, if you mm -hmm. have, let's say, you have a family, yeah, uh, it makes it a lot harder to to jump off the ledge and That's do what you want to do because then you have, you know, if you have two children who are depending on your income being regular, right. if you have a, a year in which as was true with Penn mm -hmm. in about 1979, 1980, yeah. uh, 1981. We had a, a tremendous crash mm -hmm. where we ended a show that was very successful. We produced a show that was a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. We lost every penny on that show. Wow. We got kind of like depressed mm -hmm. and went back to doing street performing. And kind of rethinking your life a bit. Uh, so, yeah, somewhat. I mean, mostly just trying to pull our egos back from the from the brink. Yeah. You know, we'd been we'd been working together for six years, and everything had been increasingly successful. And it was a terrible crash. Mm -hmm. Now, if we had had families at that point, right? Who knows? Maybe I would have gone back to teaching. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
but I didn't no. because I didn't have that. Keep your overhead low. That's it sounds like a silly piece of advice, but no. it's true. If if all you're doing is buying food and paying for your apartment, yeah, you can do that on a pretty low income. <laughs> That's very true. Well, seeing a lot of magic on social media now, on the internet, like randomly on YouTube, we'll see a lot of Penn and Teller Fullest videos, and it's a beautiful thing. You just go on binges. All my friends are the same, like strangers I meet. You see one video, and the next, and the next. And what are your thoughts on like this next style of generation of magic, I guess, like social media magicians, quote unquote? I, I, don't, I don't know yet. Right. Um, it's still kind of new. It is kind of new. It's right. a, I mean, it's certainly a different form from anything that we've had before. You know, basically, it started with David Blaine. Yeah, it did. And, you know, I, you have to give David Blaine credit for inventing a whole form of entertainment. Yeah. You know, th the idea of taking magic and focusing on it as an event off of the stage mm -hmm. is very, very interesting. Right. Um, you know, the, th the thing that is so striking about magic is that magic is the, the ultimate live form. Mm -hmm. You know, you can watch it on TV, you can watch it on, on, on videos. It feel the same. But it doesn't feel the same as no. being there in person. So oh. I, I feel like magicians will always be able to um, to survive right. in, in, the, in the face of the TV, film, and all that sort yeah. of thing. Because where you can, you can listen to a recording of a band. Yeah. And you get a lot of what the band is about. Definitely. You can, but but when you watch a magician on TV versus watching that experience when mm -hmm. it's right there with your real <laughs> eyes, there's just no comparison. No explanation for it. There's, there's just no there's no comparison with the visceral impact yeah. it has because magic is about this collision between what you see and what you know. Yeah. And to be there in a room with it happening mm -hmm. is is there, there's no way to compete with that experience. Yeah. Uh, on TV, although I'm very I'm full of admiration for all these guys uh, who are doing cool stuff. Uh huh. I've been doing social media magic for like a year or two now. Yeah. And the change in pattern of like magic in person, like you just talked about, to magic on social media, you have gotta like hook people within three seconds. Visual magic, and it kind of takes away that layer of emotion in a way so you just gotta go like straight for the trick and I think that oh I see what you're saying it definitely changes the outlook of magic it's this new style of magic it's not it's not the same it's not the same but remember in back in the old days there were people like Horace Golden and then right. Horace Golden his whole thing was doing everything very fast and flashy mm. as fast as possible okay I mean there, there wasn't I wouldn't say I had a deep emotional connection to Horace Golden. Right. I mean, he, you know, he'd come out, he'd drag out a couple of rabbits, he'd throw them in a box, he'd tear the box apart, <laughs> and it was just this frantic, frantic right. one thing after the boom, other. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You know, so uh, he wasn't really taking advantage of, of what what you know about him. Yeah. Obviously, even for even even tonight, just spending that moment yeah. with the audience mm -hmm. to uh, to. To begin, they're not going to run out of the room <laughs> in you know in, really in the first yeah. minute. Whereas on on video, they they'll click they'll, away. They'll, they'll they'll click away yeah. right away. Well, our video recording kind of ended prematurely, but it was an honor to talk with you, Teller. That was well, such beautiful real talks right here. Well, thank yeah. you. I'm 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 uh, looking forward to seeing all the wonderful things you go. Thank to you so much. Where you take magic. Thank you, Teller. The best. Check out Masterclass, Penn and Teller. <laughs> Thanks for watching. After closing the Penn and Teller show back in late 2019, I asked Teller afterwards if he can just share some thoughts on my first performance. To my surprise, he then said, What if we just watch it together? <laughs> Most of you have probably never heard Teller speak. I'm still shocked myself. I hope you all enjoy the insight that Teller gave and the chat afterwards. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I post magic unlike any other. Performances, tutorials, and surprise videos just like this one. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you're always up to date with when I post. Also, it would mean a lot to me if you shared this video with your friends and family because I am confident that they will learn a lot from this. Thanks again for watching and always remember to share meaning in what you do. Peace.